Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the brightly lit table of reviewing justice, where today we will be taking a look at this. Now, you know what I like to do? I like to, well, look for cheap earphones, um, you know, way too cheap that it has any right to be, and uh, I'll take a look at it, right? I'll buy it, I'll try it, and yeah, sometimes it's good, sometimes it isn't. So today, we're going to take a look at this set of earphones. It is the, well, I don't even know how to this OEC um, US90, right? Uh, they call this the Little B earphone. In fact, you know what? I'm gonna sort of just punch in here so you can read um, this magical text here. Um, yeah, I have, look, I have no idea what this has to do with anything. Um, maybe this earphone was, you know, modeled after bees. I don't know, I mean, that sort of little bit at the back sort of, that's kind of look like the rear end of a bee. So maybe that's it. No idea. But yeah, these are the earphones I've got. Now the interesting thing is they don't actually sort of make it super obvious, but this is actually a headpiece. As in, it has that, you know, little button thing at the back. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do sort of a fake unboxing because I've already opened this up and used it for a couple of weeks. Um, but we'll do a sort of unboxing and review thingy, right? So yeah, let's take a look at the box. You can actually see the earphones at the back. These are not the nibs that uh, came on by default. I've actually switched them out to the larger set of nibs. We'll talk about that later on. Um, let's just zoom in to see if there's any sort of anything major worth looking at here. Um, yeah, the English is not great. So that means it's a quality product. Um, yeah, nothing too, too much to look at here. Of course, they have this sort of a multifunction button. This one's quite interesting. We'll talk more about that as we get along. 9mm speakers, 120cm cables. It does feel quite long, which is quite nice. Um, frequency range, impedance, plug pit, right? So nothing too out of the ordinary. Again, they've got a whole, you know, inspired by the Tales of Bees thing, which is, um, Strange to say the least, uh, some precautions, nothing, yeah, to sort of out of the ordinary, except, uh, you know, a little bit weird English here and there. So nothing uh, too, too strange on the casing itself. Let's go ahead and rip this open and see what's inside. Now, this one, basically, well, you pull it out by the tab like this. So this goes off to one side and yeah, you've got a box in a box. So let's go ahead and pop this up. You have a box in a casing thing in a box. So that's okay. Um, let's see, it opens up here at the top, like so. And guess what? You have another box in a box. I Look, this is a little bit too much packaging, guys. You know, um, I just eat a phone, so. But yeah, regardless, here they are. So um, now, of course, I've repacked this, which is why it's sort of going all over the place like that. Um, yeah, so there is a really tiny instruction manual, probably just the right size for a B to read. But yeah, nothing too much. Probably the only thing of interest is the part where it describes how the multifunction button actually works, which is the very tiny text right here. I'm gonna try and zoom in a little bit more here. So yeah, this one's very interesting because based on the number of presses uh, you actually you know, put on that button, it means a different thing. So I thought this was a pretty cool feature the first time I actually read this manual. But yeah, later on I'll talk about why it's not as great as it could have been. So yeah, most of this isn't very much, right? Just says it's high quality space aluminum, whatever that means. Maybe they got this aluminum off the moon. Um, yeah, and then you've got your typical sort of caution things. So, okay, um, let's go back to the box itself. So we'll look at the earpiece itself last, right? It gives um, some of these nibs. So these nibs have the nice sort of little brown coloring on the inside. They only have this for the medium size ones. So these are the small size ones. These are the medium size ones. Um, and I have the big size ones actually on. So yeah, they do sort of give you a choice of nibs to switch through. So that's great. Um, what else we have inside? A little piece of cardboard that says QC Pass. So, um, okay. 
Um, just a little tag, I ripped this off um, the earphones themselves. Yeah, so I have no idea why you know they needed to have this, right? Of course, it is uh, fairly self-evident that it has a 3.5 mm jack, like so. Of course, because this has um, well the earpiece portion, right? So it does have an inbuilt mic here at the back, and of course your button. So yeah, this is the one that you know carries your microphone audio as well as your left and right. That's why there are some, so many sections on the TRS connector. So let's look at the earphones themselves, right? So I'm gonna just pop it out of the packaging, like so. So yeah, the tips do look sort of very similar to uh, what you see on a packaging, right? They have this sort of nice little uh, golden uh, bee-like shape, I guess. Um, yeah, the tips, right, of course, like any old uh, earphone, right? They pop on and off exactly as you would expect, like so. All right, so you just pinch it off and pop it back on. Okay, so nothing too sort of different or out of the world here. So let's talk about sort of the, well, hardware aspect itself, right? Now, what I like are the cords. These cords are really nice and thick, which, well, given how my previous uh, ear earphones actually spoiled, I feel I do kind of need this. My previous ones actually sort of snapped at the neck here, which really sucks. I mean, this actually still works, but well, yeah, I've got that. This feels, you know, a fair bit thinner than what we have here, right? So a nice thick cable is great in terms of build quality because that means it's not going to break so easily. So yeah, that is one sort of plus point for this. So of course, the next order of business is what does this sound like? Now, in terms of the uh, actual audio quality, it's not that great. What I found is that it is very bass and treble heavy. So essentially, like you've put uh, quite a significant EQ on this already. I've managed to work around this by basically offsetting it with my EQ. So uh, what you're seeing on screen right now are my EQ settings. So this basically sort of offsets for whatever these earphones are actually doing. And you can see that, you know, based on the way I've set things up, um, yeah, it is quite skewed. If I wanted the sound to be completely neutral, I would have to actually push my EQ a little bit further, right? As it is, it's still a little bit bass heavy. So yeah, these aren't that great in that regard it does really emphasize the bass and trebles. I would consider this a minor issue in the sense that you can fix it with EQ and after some EQing, it does sound great. But that means that, well, the earphones themselves have a little bit of a problem. So do bear that in mind when you're making your purchase. Some of the minor problems I've got is that, well, in fact, at the back of the earphones themselves, which I'll try and zoom in to show you, um, the L and R symbols are actually really difficult to see. I hope, I think I can see it a little bit on a monitor, but it's actually up here. Really microscopic. I call this a minor problem because after using it once, I figured out that, well, the right side is the side that actually has, well, the button, right, the little mic portion. So yeah, from then on, I just use that as the landmark instead of having to sort of look at it ear buds themselves. While clearly not great, well, at least it's a problem that has sort of a clear-cut solution. Another minor issue I have is that none of these nibs actually fit properly for me, right? You know how when you're wearing this sort of earphones, it needs to sort of snap or click into position. Uh, none of these really do. I guess this is a problem with my ears as opposed to the nibs that are given. Um, but yeah, you may experience the same problems. Now, some of the bigger issues I have is that, well, when it comes to the mic itself, the quality isn't all that great. In some contexts, it actually sounds a little bit quiet. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just record a short segment of audio right now, and you can hear what it sounds like. I'm going to actually put this on, right, sort of in the right place, and yeah, we'll see. So right now, I have the earphones actually in. Uh, I'm speaking at a slightly elevated volume of voice. I'm recording this onto two places. Firstly, um, via, of course, the earphones themselves and to my camera. So what I can do is I can sort of switch back and forth between the two. So you can actually compare the differences between these two audio tracks. We are of course using our camera audio as sort of a control track, right? I'm using a nice mic. So yeah, that is essentially what this recording sounds like. Now, the thing is, because I actually have my earphones in, my own voice sounds really loud, right? That's just you know, a normal effect of having the sound earphones in. 
and that would of course induce me to speak in a lower volume of voice. Um, so that may be one contributing factor to why I say um, the recordings come out a bit soft. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull these out where I realize that I'm talking at a fairly okay volume, and I'm going to move these closer to me. The mic is facing away from me, so what I'm doing is I'm talking to the opposite side of this, but I'm holding it really close to my face. This should allow it to pick up a slightly better audio without, you know, all the popping sounds that will come when I say pop. Um, so yeah, this would be uh, it working in slightly better conditions. You know, sometimes when you're on a call, you may want to just hold it close to your face like that. Of course, if I were to turn the mic towards me, that's probably going to be a little bit too much because I'm going to start blowing into the mic by accident and that's going to create, you know, some pretty loud sounds. Let's try one last configuration, right? I'm going to put just one side in. I'm just going to hold this close, right? So, uh, yeah, people tend to do calls like this, right? Um, yeah, so we'll see how these couple of different modes actually sound. And yeah, you can decide for yourself whether or not the microphone here is actually, you know, working the way you would expect in terms of sound quality. So yeah, not super great. Another big issue is with the button itself. While doing play and pause by just pressing it once, of course, works exactly as you expect. The additional features, the one where you press it twice and that goes to the next track, uh, press it three times, it goes previous. Yeah, that's kind of erratic. I could get it to work sort of half the time, right, roughly 50-50. Uh, which isn't great for something that, you know, it's really just pressing a button multiple times. It is of course great to be able to control, you know, your music player or whatever uh, when you're on the move and you don't want to pull out your phone. But unfortunately, because of the poor implementation, it's not really working as well as it could have. So this is one of the sort of major issues I've had with this as well. Now, one last point before we talk about how the price factors into things. And that is all of this. Like, really, do we need that much casing? I'm not exactly one of those, you know, really into protecting the environment, all that stuff. But man, I feel like if we cut down on the packaging a little bit, this could have cost even less. Regardless, I think part of, you know, what you're paying for is going towards the elaborate packaging, which is far from ideal, right? This is actually fairly heavy. This is like nice plastic. So. Why go to that sort of cost, guys? I mean, you know, just this on its own would have been enough. So yeah, not that ideal in terms of where your money is possibly going. And speaking of money, we can finally talk about whether this is worth the price or not. As you would have seen earlier, this was actually marked uh, to be sold at 1990 Sing dollars. It got cut down to 1590. So the question is, is it worth that price of course i'll put uh, currency conversions on screen honestly for me i'm fine with this given the build quality just note that you know the other features that are being promised may or may not work out as you expect and that's hard to forget that in my case because i do play around with eq all the time anyway i'm able to sort of uh you know make this sound good for myself if you're not into that or if you don't really know how to do that then you may get less value out of these earphones than I have. So that is a fairly important thing to think about. In my case, just for the build quality, just for the fact that it does have a built-in mic, I'm okay with it. That's it for this review of the OEC US90 earphones, um, the one that is modeled after Bs. They've actually got a couple of others as well that are modeled after different things with, you know, more funny stories down at the bottom. But yeah, it's okay not great you can consider buying it if it's on sale but don't expect it to be sort of mind-blowing out of the box that's all there is for this review i hope it's been useful for you but yeah until next time you're watching 0612 tv with nerdfirst.net thank you very much for watching if you like my work and are feeling generous you can shoot me a one-time donation on paypal or sign up for a recurring one on patreon of course you can simply like comment and subscribe you know the deal for more videos, links to my channel and a related playlist are on screen. Thank you for your support.